Good evening and welcome to St. Patrick's Parish. As pastor here, I'm Father James Hughes. I'm Father Felix Min, the assistant pastor. It is a great pleasure to be with all of you in this moment as we record this particular take for all of you, the parishioners of St. Patrick's and anyone else who has been visiting our parish website. It is of grave concern that we know that things ended quite abruptly last weekend when we sadly had to close our doors. To be able to not allow those public masses, I have to say, was a very surreal moment as Father Felix and I had to celebrate the Mass, and in doing so, we did so lovingly in a way that you are all certainly within our hearts. Yet we also felt the pain of empty pews as we still feel today. As we are approaching the fifth Sunday of Lent, we thought we'd take this opportunity to express our immediate prayers for all of you and know that we are doing our best right now to continue to strategize, to reach out in many different ways, even though we cannot at this moment celebrate Mass publicly with all of you. Mm -hmm. And although all the public worship has been um, suspended, uh, we do have some access uh, that we are trying to reach out to you. Uh, one way is we have two ways. Uh, one is our Blessed Sacrament Chapel, St. Joseph's Chapel is available with four people maximum number at a time and one hour limit per person. So please do consider coming in for an hour of prayer with Jesus. And also we do have another chapel available outside. You can go across the street, uh, the main street, and um, you can actually look uh, towards uh, our rectory building, and we have exposed the Blessed Sacrament uh, right by the window of the chapel in our rectory so that anyone who wishes uh, to come and spend some time with Jesus may come and spend some time there across the street um, looking at Jesus from there. And so in this opportunity together, we wanted to recognize uh, and gratefully recognize your thoughts and prayers that have come out to us. Some of you have emailed us. We are looking at other forms of communication right now. But in this opportunity, although we have not live streamed any of our masses, we want to take this video message as an opportunity to be able to give each of you a reflection on this Sunday's gospel. The Sunday that is coming is that of the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent, and the particular gospel is from John chapter 11. Let us now piously listen uh, to this gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a certain man, Lazarus, was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters of Lazarus sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard this, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the people there were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, 
Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The, Jew the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, Jesus was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. As many of us are going through a difficult time due to the current COVID-19 spread throughout the world, 
This Sunday's Gospel offers us the message on the importance of trust in the Lord. In such a confusing time where much division and isolation has taken place, it could be difficult to feel the presence of the Lord, and perhaps there could be some doubts in our faith. But in such situations, we must not let go of the thread of hope that even in the midst of our own human doubts and fear, Jesus will triumph over this pandemic and come to our hearts through the Holy Spirit to comfort us in our own distress. In hearing about how Jesus came to Lazarus when he was ill, the Lord is moved with compassion and decides to go to him. However, despite his dire desire to hurry, Jesus first faces the fear and hesitance, hesitancy of his disciples. Due to the fear of possible persecution of themselves with Jesus, the disciples first ask the Lord, the people there were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And despite the high possibility of being stoned to death, Jesus fearlessly makes his way to Lazarus because the Lord does not leave his loved ones in the dark, even if it is going to cost his own life. And the reflection on this radical love of Jesus towards Lazarus, his loved one, hearkens us to fix our gaze on the cross, uniting our own fears and doubts to the Lord on that cross. As your pastors, it breaks our hearts very deeply to see you, the faithful of St. Patrick's Parish, going through such a hard time without any access to the sacraments but be assured of our prayers. We've been offering masses and praying deeply that the peace of the Lord be in your homes and your hearts. Undoubtedly, you will find yourselves in various uncertainties, not really seeing the end of this all. But just as Jesus had such a blindly fearless love for his loved one, Lazarus, let us also ask the Lord to come to us in his infinite love. Let us pray that we may realize and receive the grace to have an unwavering expectation that our God will never abandon us in the dark, but will shine his light of consolation and peace. Thank you, Father Felix. In recognizing through that reflection, I too reflected on this gospel and can't help but recognize in the midst of these challenging times the words that really stood out to me in prayer recently. Master, the one you love is ill. This was far more than a fact that was stated to Jesus. This was brought home because a loved one, a close friend, whom he visited as a family, both Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha, in Bethany, quite regularly. And in doing so, he was recognizing a tremendous hurt. As we hear those words that in the gospel today, Jesus wept. He weeps. He weeps for us because he wants so much for us. And sometimes, unfortunately, even in situations like this pandemic, it can help us reflect on what is most important, what is most dear to us and for us, how some of the things of this world can be distractions and also temptations to steer away from where the focus should be. So when we take a look at illness, it is a kind of obstacle. 
It's an obstacle to regular life and living of full health, doing what we want to do, the freedom to do so many things. And in this country of ours, we're truly blessed, as many parts of the world are also blessed. But in this moment where we share through this great equalizer in the coronavirus, whether we're in still decent health or poor health as we speak, it is an opportunity for us to see through this gospel a challenge that is placed before us. Jesus enters with a risk when he goes back to Bethany, as Father Felix just mentioned, because he could have been stoned to death. But his love surpasses all the challenges of this world. He will go through them. He will cut through them just so that he can make a connection with each and every one of us. He so desperately wants our hearts, ourselves. This moment of illness, this kind of darkened cave, is an opportunity for us not to go and hide. It is not a moment to give in to our fears and especially to try to predict the future when in fact the future is not in our hands. The only moment we have control of is the right now. And we could be like a true sibling, like Martha in the Gospel. Notice, dear friends, that she does not go to the Lord and say, can you raise my brother from the dead? No, rather, hers is a sincere prayer that asks that the Father's will be done. It's a great lesson for each and every one of us in this moment. How can we allow the will of the Father to be done there we, where we don't create obstacles, but rather open our hearts to trust, as Father Felix said, to trust that he knows what's best for us. And even if moments of the results of evil seem like they're gaining ground and spreading even more and more, let us recognize that the great obstacles of this world are but passages to a way of life, a fullness of life that we should all long for. Jesus' friendship is wanting to unbind us. And sometimes we have to admit that our own fears bind us up. There's many things in this world that bind us and connect us maybe in unnatural ways. We need to see the supernatural of grace. And do we need the sacraments? Yes, we do. But also, dear friends, let us see this as an opportunity for the domestic church to rise. You know, God's presence in the home is very powerful as well. That must not be underestimated. And your gathering as families is a great strength. Your reaching out to one another is a great purpose. Your opportunity to know that we pray for one another will be, in fact, the very foundation stones of what our faith is really built upon, a community and a communio that the Father wants with each and every one of us. So let us recognize that as we meditate this week on the Gospel of John, as we enter into this Lenten season, that is not the Lent that we could have ever imagined. And unfortunately, I may say this, that this Lent may continue on a little bit longer than 40 days because of the isolation that we, in fact, are experiencing is still an opportunity for an abandonment to the will of the Father. There are many stories that we can follow in the news each day, and too many to count. I'm sure all of us are looking at it with hopes that we could restore our life back to a kind of normalcy. But one piece of news that touched me very deeply the last couple of days was the sacrifice of one particular Italian priest in Italy who actually was given the opportunity for a ventilator that his own parishioners bought him because he was tested positive for COVID-19. And at the age of 72, he sacrificially loved his parishioners to the point that he gave up that ventilator for a younger man. And in doing so, he has, to this moment, suffered death. He is no longer with us, 
but Don Giuseppe, Father Giuseppe, wants to live in the hearts of many, but he also looks forward. He has come out of the caves of fear because he trusts in the Lord. His faithfulness as a priest can be a great testament not only to us as priests, but to each and every one of us as Christians, how we can generously give ourselves to others. He is kind of a St. Maximilian Colby of our day in a strange way. It is an opportunity to know that all of us are called to sacrifice. So let these days now be an opportunity to draw closer again to one another in prayer. And please God that we'll be able to see one another at some point. We don't know when, but our intentions right now is to continue with these video messages for each and every one of you on a weekly basis, particularly focusing in on the gospel. Also recognizing, dear friends, that we are strategizing right now, and I'm grateful to our parish staff, along with our communications teams, and many other volunteers who have put themselves forward, who generously want to give of their time and talents, that we, in fact, are looking for also creative ways to reach out, particularly for those who might not access this particular website or YouTube channel or other forms of social media. So we're working on a phone tree where I'm going to ask some of our volunteers to be able to call out to you just as a kind of check-in. So hopefully you'll be prepared that if they're calling uh, on behalf of St. Patrick's Parish and as all, all of us as priests here, that uh, you don't actually interpret them as phone scammers, just so you know. But uh, in this, uh, we will also let you know that we're trying to work on a basis in the coming week or so to see how we can work the sacrament of confession effectively as we approach Holy Week. We don't have strict answers right now. We will say that many things are creatively done that you might have heard about already in some other parishes and other dioceses around the world, but we're gaining guidance through the Archdiocese of Vancouver. We still have to respect the directives that are coming from the provincial health officer. Whether we want to agree with it or not, it's important that we heed their message well. And staying home is a very tough thing, but it's important for it being able to flatten the curve, to be able to bring back uh, the opportunities that uh, we once enjoyed. So dear friends, I'd ask that we cooperate together, that we look for those creative ways, and also to let you know that uh, we were able to sequester many emails, but if we don't have a current email that you might have and want to send it to parish.stpatsvan at rcav.org. Uh, you can email us your email address and we'll update that and we hope to do that over the coming week, not only with this video message through our website, but also uh, to be able to reach out to you uh, concurrently and with uh, strict updates on a regular basis, if not even daily basis. So I'm grateful to the many volunteers behind the scenes in this way. I also just want to mention one other thing, and that is that also we are working with the Archdiocese and our communications team to have a donations button on our website, which we currently have, and something even more effectively is in the works over these next 24 hours. And uh, being able to donate online, we'd appreciate uh, your generosity uh, to keep those who have envelopes can do so through this system. And uh, it will help us with some basic operations and utilities that we still have to pay for right now. So any kind of opportunities in your generosity this way is greatly appreciated, but most importantly, your prayers. And so dear friends, uh, let us conclude this opportunity of a video message that I'd like to pray and then ask Father Felix to give us the blessing. Uh, I'm going to pray the prayer from the third scrutiny uh, that would be on this Sunday for all those who were catechumens. And we do have several who are looking to be baptized in this parish uh, this Easter. Uh, we don't know exactly when that will be, but we're working on a process. It will happen. And I'd ask that you not only pray for those coming into the faith, but for ourselves. And I think that this prayer is a beautiful prayer that will certainly meditate on this weekend's gospel. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, by raising Lazarus from the dead, you showed that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Free from the grasp of death, those who await your life-giving sacraments and deliver them from the spirit of corruption. Through your spirit who gives life, fill them with faith, hope, and charity, that they may live with you always in the glory of your resurrection. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you.